Hey everyone, this is Dave. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. Today, we're going over the latest updates from the past couple weeks with Rocket Lab, including the stock and the underlying company and what developments have been going on there. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing by the end of the video because every new subscriber is so important to the continued growth of the channel. And if you're not new here, thank you for continuing to watch. Much appreciated. Okay, with that out of the way, let's dive into this week's Rocket Lab updates. Starting off with the stock, it's been a pretty good few days for the share price. You can see that we had a big jump up on the 21st, the day after Donald Trump's inauguration as president. And this all seems to be due to basically one sentence he said in his speech. Uh, I did talk about this previously, so I'm not going to go into too much. I did talk about this in a previous video, so I'm not going to go into too much depth on it, but here it was. And we will pursue our manifest destiny into the stars, launching American astronauts to plant the stars and stripes on the planet Mars. Yeah, so just saying uh, they're going to have a bit more of a focus on space and try to put American boots on Mars uh, had a wide impact on space stocks, not just Rocket Lab itself, which was up about 30% on the day, but pretty much any space stock you can think of, at least American company, was up significantly. We are down a little bit since then, but continue to hang on to most of those gains. And if you zoom further out, we're pretty much near all time highs. We've dropped a little bit, but still a great price for the stock. OK, next up, we have news about Rocket Lab's next Electron launch. It will be for Constellation Operator Kinese. It's a very common customer for Rocket Lab. This will be the IoT for you and me mission scheduled for a launch window opening on February 4th. This will be once again from Launch Complex One in New Zealand. The mission is the fourth of five Electron launches booked by Kinese, so they're getting towards the end of that big launch contract now, and they're really just powering through these launches at a pretty good clip. This will be the first launch of the year for Electron, so it looks like we won't have any launches in the month of January. Don't generally love to see a month with zero launches, but it's pretty common for them to have a little bit of hangover after a year end and take a little bit of time to kind of get going in the new year. January seems to be a slow month for launch in general. This is going to be the company's 59th Electron launch overall, so they're really starting to get up there in terms of number of launches for this vehicle. Continuing on Electron, we did just get news that Rocket Lab has signed a contract to launch a global wildfire detection and monitoring mission for Aurora Tech. Obviously, this is a very timely considering the massive amount of damage that has been going on in California. Absolutely horrible to see so many homes destroyed. So this company, Aurora Technologies, uh, their satellite is actually being built by Spire Global. And usually a one launch contract is not that big of a deal, but I do just like to highlight this one because of the fast turnaround and how responsive it's gonna be. It's going to be you really love to see that when it comes to Electron launches. This Electron mission will deploy eight satellites to orbit within just four months from the contract signing, which will enable Aurora Tech to meet the season sensitive requirements for wildfire detection mission. Obviously, you get more wildfires, you know, certain times of the year. So they really want to rush to get this out in time, probably why they can't squeeze it in to a Falcon rideshare mission and just showing some of the value that Electron brings with that responsiveness. So nice to see that they're squeezing in a new launch contract that will launch in the same year. Uh, hopefully that helps out the numbers for the year a little bit. Continuing on with Electron, we did just get word that Black Sky has now shipped their first new Gen 3 satellites to Rocket Lab for an expected launch in February as well. This launch also expected to come from Rocket Lab's Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand as pretty much... Virginia seems to be almost exclusively haste launches, at least right now, but maybe we will see the odd orbital launch from there going forward. This Gen 3 constellation will offer customers new mission critical insights with the addition of very high resolution, rapid revisit, 35 centimeter imagery, and AI enabled analytics. Black Sky, of course, another very frequent customer for Electron, and indeed, I believe they have launched all of their satellites on Electron to date. 
at least if I'm not mistaken. Okay, continuing on from last week, this is not fresh, but there was a rocket report from Payload that I do think bears mentioning. Uh, if you have been following Rocket Lab for a long time and really dove deep in the company, you may be familiar with a lot of what's in here, but I figured it really bears sharing, especially for people who are newer to the company. They can learn a lot in just one report. Additionally, Payload does have their own kind of speculation section where they talk a little bit about what potential constellation rocket lab may end up going for down the line and it's a pretty interesting report worth a read if you haven't looked at it already firefly now has launched their blue ghost spacecraft to the moon on a falcon 9 and this mission is supported by rocket lab software and components and not in a trivial way really it's actually a lot of support coming from rocket lab here Interesting to see the two competitors also collaborate. You do tend to get a lot of that in the space industry. So Rocket Lab is supporting the Blue Ghost Lunar Lander on its journey to the moon with the company's Max Flight and Max Ground Data software suites. Additionally, Ro Rocket Lab will also provide three high efficiency photovoltaic assemblies per comprising uh, integrated space grade solar cells mounted on the lander size and top deck, basically providing power for the spacecraft. During the Blue Ghost mission, the Rocket Lab team will also support Firefly's execution of multiple burns and management of orbit determination and altitude control throughout the cruise and landing phases of the mission. So Rocket Lab does have a little bit more experience with these burns and missions. They have sent a capstone mission to the moon previously. Hopefully this one does land successfully. Most commercial companies don't have a great track record of landing on the moon successfully on their first attempt. So really hoping they do because I think it'll be good for the CLIPS program and NASA giving more funding to commercial companies if they can really prove out their capabilities and their ability to do this for a cheaper price than NASA themselves. Let me know what you think. Is Firefly and Rocket Lab going to be able to land this sucker on the moon successfully on the first go? Or will it be their next attempt maybe? Okay, and then this piece of news doesn't mention Rocket Lab specifically, but I really thought it was worth highlighting because the U.S. Space Force is forecasting $2.3 billion in commercial satellite services contracts. Uh, this is obviously a massive amount of money for satellite builders and Rocket Lab rapidly expanding in the satellite build-out domain could potentially end up bidding on a lot of these RS RFPs when they come out. The largest opportunity is nearly a $900 million program focused on maneuverable satellites in geostationary orbit, so a little bit further out than LEO. Uh, $900 million is a lot. The biggest contract Rocket Lab has received to date is from the SDA. It has about a $500-ish million price tag, maybe $550, something along those lines. Kind of does support the uh, thesis or what Adam and Peter were mentioning, how the government opportunity for building out, you know, satellites for government right now, it looks a lot like a hockey stick, but that massive growth and uh, not slowing down anytime soon between this as well as the SDA program with their tranche three coming soon. Continuing on with the Space Force and the government. So a little while ago, there was this story that came out that the, that the SDA director had been placed on an investigative administrative leave. So basically he was under investigation for doing some things wrong. And immediately I was a little bit concerned because as many of you will know, Rocket Lab's biggest contract ever that they are working on right now is for the SDA to build out satellites. So if an award from the SDA was improperly given and it was clawed back or something, you know, certainly wouldn't want Rocket Lab to lose that big contract. According to unofficial sources familiar with the situation, um, they said that it was linked to complaints from contractors about their procurement methods and alleged improper sharing of proprietary information information. Luckily, though, just yesterday, we have seen reports that it is not Rocket Lab's portion of the SDA constellation that was uh, accused of wrongdoing here. So 
Basically, there was a $424 million award to York Space Systems and Tyvek, which is basically Terran Orbital, which is now Lockheed Martin, out of a field of eight competitors. So for the award, each contractor was tasked with building 10 trans true transport layer gamma variant prototype satellites. Now, this constellation is so hard to keep track of because, once again, you have tranches, one, two, three, etc. Then you have layers and this one being the transport layer, and then you have variants in that layer, this one being the gamma variant. So uh, these satellites, I believe, a little bit more expensive than the non-gamma variants. Anyway, all that to be said, uh, they're investigating the award to Terran Orbital and York and not Rocket Lab. Now, we don't know out of the field of eight competitors if Rocket Lab had also uh, applied or, you know, submitted a proposal to build out these satellites as well as the transport layer ones they are building already. But we'll see. I mean, they're still they're still investigating this, so it's hard to say what will happen. But Viasat is the one company that actually protested the award in the U.S. Court of Federal Claims, alleging that its offering was unfairly weighted and that its competitors were improperly giving a helping hand in the bidding, bidding process. Going on a little bit more, Viasat's case, they claim that the SDA provided detailed comments to the winners, Tyvek and York, on how they could improve their proposals. And during their in-person negotiation meeting, uh, the SDA spoon-fed Tyvek on the exact change that they needed to make in order to receive an award. Apparently, the Defense Department and SDA intend to take corrective action regarding the award, including reevaluating bids. And the initial corrected corrective offering would be to reevaluate proposals, establish a new competitive range, and negotiate with each company that qualified for that competitive range, and halt ongoing works with Tyvek and York. So we'll have to see if anything comes of this, if Viasat ends up getting the contract. You never know if Rocket Lab was in there or not, but I just thought it would be important to mention in the context that no Rocket Lab's contract wasn't at risk and, you know, who knows? Maybe they're in the mix of those eight companies. Hopefully going forward, because there are, you know, tranche, there is tranche three coming along that we fully expect Rocket Lab will be a player in that competition as well. Uh, there will be no impropriety there. And the hope is Rocket Lab will land a, a decent number of satellites in tranche three as well awards in 2025. Okay, continuing on. So, Rocket Lab's second re-entry class spacecraft for Varda is operating successfully on orbit, supporting payloads for Air Force Research Lab and NASA. The first payload for Varda did re-enter Earth successfully and was recovered. It was manufacturing uh, pharmaceuticals. This one took off on a Falcon 9 rocket on January 14th, was part of a rideshare mission. This is the second of four spacecraft that Rocket Lab has said they're making with Varda, although Varda has said lately that there may only be three. There's a bit of confusion what's going on there. But anyway, this one is a success, so congratulations to Rocket Lab and Varda, and hopefully they are able to re-enter it successfully, and there's not as long of a wait as there was in that previous one, because if you remember, uh, this spacecraft could not get permission to re-enter Earth's atmosphere and land for, well, I guess, you know, come down by a parachute from, uh, I believe it's the FAA who controls that. So hopefully this one will be a little bit more smooth for Rocket Lab and Varda. Also, nice to note, the third spacecraft is complete and awaiting shipment for launch already. Okay, just a small one here. Apparently, it's now been disclosed that Rocket Lab spent $210,000 in the U.S. lobbying in Q4. To me, I mean, I'm not an expert on lobbying and government and all this kind of stuff, but personally, I wouldn't be surprised if this is just like pennies compared to what most space primes spend lobbying whether you're talking about spacex or lockheed or all the others but it's kind of what you have to do i think to advocate for yourself and get contracts and make sure you know you have to play the game otherwise other people will spend those lobbying dollars and get those contracts so it's the world they're moving into as far as i'm concerned when they kind of get a seat at the big table and become one of the big boys when it comes to space and launch and manufacturing. Okay, we did get a notice of marine operations from Rocket Lab to the community around Wallops, Virginia. 
They were writing to let people know that they may see an uptick of activity at the space structures facility and share information about the project. So there will be barges and other support craft transporting components to and from the ramp along the Martin Lagoon. So it looks like we're going to be seeing an uptick in activity of parts for Neutron coming in via barge. And they do even say that here, this is for Neutron. The barge is expected to be 250 feet by 50 feet large and will be supported by a tug uh, moving very slowly. And they're saying, no, there's not going to be big waves. They'll keep the noise down, all that kind of stuff. But just nice to see uh, another sign out there of progress on Neutron and that there'll be an uptick in activity as they bring in those parts. And you have to think they're getting close to uh, assembling a first stage. We've seen so many of the big parts and there's more coming in via barge clearly. So uh, surely they're, they're getting close to putting these parts together, I would think. Okay, uh, next up, there have been several interviews and conferences lately. I figured I would highlight. I might bring you some highlights later on when I listen to all of them. I haven't gotten the chance yet, but I wanted to share them with you anyway. First of all, uh, Peter Beck spoke to public and talked a little bit about the new administration as well as Rocket Lab in general. Let's take a quick listen here to this one minute clip. Are you bullish on what the Trump administration means for Rocket Lab? And if so, why? Yeah, I am actually, because for a couple of reasons. One, there, there is a clear focus on defense and a clear focus on efficiency and getting the most out of the taxpayer dollar for the nation. And on those two fronts, these are, these are very important and strong areas for Rocket Lab. We are a f fully commercial company. We don't do the traditional defense contracting cost plus kind of contracts. If the government wants um, high value for, for, their, for their taxpayer dollar and return an asset, that's where our sweet spot is for us in our wheelhouse. So we think this new administration will be very, very good for us. It'll be good for the space industry. It's very pro, very pro space, very pro defense. And these are our two big sectors. Also, another one here, uh, Space News started up a YouTube channel. I guess they, they're moving in on my turf, if you will. Uh, anyway, a very big website. Uh, they are they did have an interview with Peter Beck to kind of launch their channel and podcast. Basically, if you want to give a listen, uh, should be pretty interesting as well. And then, of course, there was a uh, radio interview where Peter Beck spoke about Rocket Lab, his career history, all that stuff. If you want to listen, this is on newstalkb.co.nz, so a New Zealand-based station or podcast. Uh, Adam Spice also did speak at a conference, the annual Needham Growth Conference. A lot of stuff we've heard before, but always interesting to hear Adam speak. And if you're interested, there is a link on Rocket Lab's investor relation webpage. And finally, I just figured I'd highlight a new wiki that a community member on Twitter has been working on and shared. Thank you to SpaceGhost42 for building out this wiki page, which is basically a repository for uh, hopefully all the information we have around Rocket Lab to be put in one place and make it a lot easier for us to research the company, uh, new people to the company to find out all there is to know about it. Uh, very handy as opposed to jumping around all over the internet looking for different things. So uh, I think generally wikis work best the more people you have updating them. So hopefully as a community, uh, I'm not too sure if we are yet able to have the public update this, but it'd be, you know, great to get something like this going for the community. It is rocketlab.wiki. So those are all the Rocket Lab updates I have for you today. Let me know what you think about any of these news stories down below as well. If there's anything important you think I missed that should be covered, don't hesitate to share that down below. Always love hearing how you're doing with your shares. If you're selling, buying, holding, uh, selling options, love to hear those conversations down below. And we do continue them as well in my Discord server that is linked in the description. Once again, if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you will consider doing that. It would be very much appreciated. And thank you to all the channel members for your continued support. You guys are the best. Uh, I hope you guys have a great week. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.